Hi there, Shauna Karras here with another Ask Shauna Answer. All right, this one comes from Linda, and Linda says, um, I am starting to work with a horse that is fine, but if you uh, walk up to him in the paddock with nothing, he's fine if you walk up to the paddock with nothing in your hands. But as soon as you approach him with a, halt, a lead rope or a halter, he pins his ears back flat and reaches out as if he's thinking of biting. He does know some training on touching the target. Should I use a halter as a target or just ignore the bad behavior? Once a halter is on, he is fine, except he's a little herd bound and pushy. Okay, I think this is a great question because it kind of is multifaceted. So basically, right now, the halter represents unpleasant things. So he's trying to avoid the halter at all costs. Everything they do essentially is a choice outside of reflexive behaviors and, you know, things that we've conditioning we've got. But, but mostly he's making a choice. He's saying, I, I find it more reinforcing to avoid the halter than to get near the halter. So instead of triggering all that defense and that fight or flight reflex, what I would do instead is I would hang the halter on the fence. Walk past it. Go over here. You do your little session. The halter's just hanging there. He starts realizing this gets hung here and it is here. It is just part of the session, but it's not in your hands. I imagine when it's in your hands, is it, it probably isn't that big a deal, I suspect, just hanging on the fence. It's when the human has it that it predicts some unpleasant, probably some unpleasant handling somewhere or something he found unpleasant because clearly he's trying to avoid it and he's threatening. So and that's fear. That's all fear right there. So um, what I do is first just hang it there. And then see if you can't walk by it. Figure out where is that threshold. How close can we be before he starts to lose his noodle a little bit? So what we want to do is uh, as you get closer and he doesn't lose his noodle, uh, figure out can you get closer and closer and closer. And you can use a target for this. But make sure the target is really strong at the furthest points from it. Until eventually you can ask him to touch the target or touch the halter, and you can use the target at first until eventually he'll quite readily just go to the target on his own. So he'll, or, or you know, if you point, he just goes and he is without hesitation and he clearly likes it. So, um, and remember, walking away from the target in the early, or the halter in the earliest stages is actually a form of reinforcement. Because if he finds a halter so aversive, you want to keep it to the point where he can be comfortable about it, where you're just at threshold, not going over threshold. But it still means there's some apprehension apprehension there where he's kind of looking at it and thinking and just a little wary reinforce him a ton with food at that point so he starts making a new association we're building a different reinforcement history it's we're doing systematic desensitization and counter conditioning okay so that's that's that part as that goes good and he whoops that halter there's no hesitation he doesn't it, it's all good you can tell he's very comfortable now the next thing i would do and i do it the halter without the lead rope so no lead rope yet, just the halter. When you can hold the halter up, and, and at first when you do it, I wouldn't hold it up. I wouldn't even hold it up where it looks like your arm's ready to do something. I would just hold it way out to the side by your body. So he goes out there and he, just like this, <laughs> so he can just go touch the halter. And so, but it doesn't look like any intentions because believe me, they know the difference. So as he can just go touch the halter and he's good with that, he's good with that, that's great. Do it the other side. Can you do it over there? Can you do it here? Can you hang it on the fence everywhere? When that's all good, I would go through the same steps with the halter and the lead rope. I'd go back to the halter with the lead rope hanging on the fence. And then when he can touch it and that's all good, then can you hold it, hold it out, you know, so it doesn't look like you're about to do something. And then eventually have him targeting until eventually you can have him start to put his nose through the little, uh, to the, the loop. But what you're doing is create, breaking the predictability because he doesn't hate the halter per se. He hates what the halter represents. So, and, and that he gets quiet once you have the halter on, he's good that's kind of shut down. That's learned helplessness. That's him feeling like I don't have a choice. And that's where he gets herd bound, where he wants to be with the others or he gets pushy. So he, that's his way of trying to cope with that lack of choice there. So we want to give him choice. And believe me, you'll get him there. One of the things I say a lot is slow down, you'll go faster. Slow down, let him make this choice. Let him determine that it's good. Let him learn all these things. And then what we're going to do is when that is good, we will then, uh, it, it'll be easier. And and keep in mind, through this process, don't just stay there and go halter, halter, halter. Go do other things a bit and then come back to it and then go do other things a bit and then come back to it. And this may take days, it may take weeks, it doesn't really matter because in the long run, through this process, you're building a strong 
and classic conditioning, really. You're building a strong reinforcement history with you and with the training. And when that takes place, this makes all the difference in the world. If they're just doing it for the food, that's not really what we want. We want to be building this history so that when when things get a little tougher down the road, when it is time to do his feed or whatever, I don't know, but we want him to say, you know what? Afraid of the halter, like the person. Afraid of the halter, like the person. I can make a little choice to be with the, the person. So it doesn't mean you go up to it and, and break the trust or create frustration. It means what you do is just, it, it's a way that you can help him to feel supported and safe as you go to some of these things that he finds challenging. But, you know, in, in, for practical purposes, he needs to be able to be handled and have that stuff done because that's for his own well-being. So as you get that going and then you go on the same steps with the lead rope, or you know what I wouldn't even do? I'm going to change that a bit. I wouldn't even go to the lead rope yet. I would go to putting the halter where he can put his nose through. You can use a cone with a target in it so that the, the cone is here, the halter nose part is here. He can put his nose down and touch the target. When he, you can put the halter on him, and I don't care how long it takes, make sure that the tactile on his head and neck is also very solid, that you can touch his head and neck without halter. That can be a whole separate thing that you can touch all over. He doesn't mind. You can go over his ears. He doesn't mind. Making sure all of that tactile is really strong is an important element as well. Because if he hates that part, then he's going to hate you touching his head with the halter. So make sure that part is separate and good as well. And then when you can get the halter or where he's putting his head in and you can go over and that's great, reinforce him, don't have him wear it for a bit. When he's good with that, I mean solid, then I would put the halter on, but I wouldn't touch it. I would just clip it and I'd say, we're just going to do a training session and go on your way and do a training session. So he starts learning. Wearing the halter means I'm going to be doing a training session, something fun, something I like. It doesn't predict what he thinks it means right now. So he thinks it means troubles coming of some sort. That's his perception. I don't care what he's been through. It's his perception and he's being very clear about that. So we want to change that so that he goes, oh, wearing the halter is not a big deal. When that's all going good, I would start the process, like I mentioned earlier, the same process with the lead rope. When you finally have him putting it on with the lead rope on, I wouldn't even pull on the lead rope. I would hold the target out and say, walk on and, and have him uh, go on, move forward to the target. And then, so you're retraining, building a new association with the cues that have historically been a part of the halter and the lead rope and leading. Meanwhile, you can also do liberty leading. Liberty leading is a great way for him to learn to walk with you, stop with you, turn with you. It will build a lot of trust again in the process, but it also gives him a stronger foundation for this leading. So when the halter and lead rope's on, he can be liberty leading with halter. And then liberty leading with halter and lead rope, you know, but it doesn't mean pressure. It just means walk, stop, go. And this is all things that are going to change his emotions. And so it's a long little track that it sounds like, but some parts will go fast and some parts will go slower. But the truth is, it's going to be more solid and more resilient. It's going to have, you're going to have it more often in different places. And even in tough, it's going to be a strong, strong, strong behavior if you let him make the choice and don't shut him down. So I would not ignore what he is telling you loud and clear. It, pay attention to it. It's no big deal. We have tools to change that. So just be patient, take your time. And I really appreciate you reaching out to me for this because it is something that you know, we, unless you know this stuff, you don't have another tool. So now you kind of have a new set of things to think about. And if you have more questions as you move along, please don't hesitate to, to get reach back out to me. So for you or anybody else watching, you, if you have questions, you can go to uh, my website, which is www.on-target-training.com. So it's on target training with the two hyphens. And on that, on my page, you can go to uh, the Ask Shauna tab and you can submit a question there. You can also go to the, um, you can also go to, and that'll take you to, actually, you also need to go to my YouTube page because the YouTube page is where I tend to air these things. So if you're not a subscriber yet, I would go to Shauna Karras' YouTube page and get subscribed because this is where I tend to put these things. And then... Also on there is a podcast tab. And on the podcast tab, there's lots of information that also may help you with your guy since he's kind of new to the training. And so there's 
all sorts of things. And I walk you through training steps and give you ideas. So that's another thing that you or anybody else can do. Also, anybody else that is or you that is interested in learning more about what we're doing here at Terra Nova Training Center, you can go to TerraNovaTrainingCenter.com. It's T-E-R-R-A. N-O-V-A Training Center. <laughs> so it's TerranovaTrainingCenter.com. You'll find out what we're up to, what our schedule's like, and you can even sign up for a newsletter, and then you'll stay abreast of what we're doing in in out here <laughs> or in the world. Anyway, so I appreciate your question. I hope you have great success with it. I know you will. And like I said, if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Until next time, enjoy getting your horse on target. Bye.